Hey guys, Debug here with Squad, and this is the first of my .NET reverse engineering tutorials. So in this tutorial, we will be going over MSIL, which is the Microsoft Intermediate Language, which is um, basically what .NET applications are compiled down to. So. The MSIL, or often referred to as just IL, is a set of instructions that make up .NET programs and then in turn, in during runtime, tell the computer what to do. So during runtime, the CLR or Common Language Runtime, uh, the just-in-time compiler converts these instructions into uh, native code that the computer and CPU can process and execute. And so there are a whole bunch of instructions. Many of them are very similar. Um, a lot of them you will see more often than not, and I'll go over some of those. But um, the main ones that I will show you in just a second will be the ones that you should keep in mind when cracking applications because they are if statements, returns, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'll go over the main one, which is an LDSTR. Basically, LDSTR is just a string. So this would be important if you're looking for, for instance, a password. So if password box equals access one two three, show the hidden form or something, something like that. Obviously, that's very insecure and basic, but that's just the best basic idea I can give you. The next is BR true and BR false. And there's also BRS. This is just the shorter version, an int8 as opposed to an int32. Uh, in all reality, it doesn't really matter. If you see them, they do the same exact thing. What these are are basically an if statement. So you would see a BR true if you have, say, if textbox.text equals, obviously, this is a pseudocode, so don't copy this or anything access one two three then something 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 this is where you would see the br true that would then branch down into something so if, if for instance you had a br true and you didn't know the password so you didn't know this password and in the msil you edited it to instead br false the opposite you could put in anything that is not this password and the code would execute into this if statement here, if that makes sense. And likewise, that goes vice versa. If you had if something equals password, then if not password, and this was br false, you could change it in the MSIL to br true, and that anything that is password equals password would work I think so yeah that should be correct okay and now the next one I shall go over is call which is actually right here call basically just calls a method so you could have something like if verify debug for instance if it checks username then login or something like that so here it would ha be a combination of BR true and a call. The call would call this verify function. Verify would return a boolean, true or false, which you could then bypass by simply swapping the BR true or BR false value for its opposite value. Now lastly, one of the most important ones are NOP and return, RET. NOP is no operation. So if you want to remove a bunch of stuff from MSIL, you can simply replace the instructions with NOP. So no op operation rather than uh, removing the instructions. I'll go over that in another tutorial, but it's always better to replace them with no operation rather than removing them and messing with the call stack or the size of the current block of instructions. And now return RET is exactly what it sounds like. It's simply a return statement. So say you have a bunch of integrity checks at the beginning of starting your application, right? And integrity checks just check to see if the application has been modified in any form. 
So you say, here's your entry point of the application, and inside this entry point you have some sort of check if um, uh, not if tampered with, then crash application, for instance. Obviously, it's a pseudocode, but that's what you would have. So that would be a very easy check to patch manually. But if you had, for instance, a whole ton of these that you didn't bother or didn't want to be bothered with, you could simply add at the top of the MSIL instruction list a return, just like so, and it would return right there and not execute any of this code. So I believe that's about all I wanted to cover in this beginning tutorial. So hopefully you get a brief idea of what MSIL is. I certainly do not have a complete understanding of what all of it is or all of these instructions of course but there are plenty plenty websites of documentation that you can always look up and check so hopefully this was useful and uh, another tutorial will be coming out shortly thanks <laughs>